Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design, and this is Make and Take Tuesday. This is a little series where I introduce a new design or tool or product or paper collection um, to inspire you to make something beautiful. Today, I'm working with some brand new, a brand new Renee Bouquet's release. This is called Sweet Shop. This is her Christmas release, and it is adorable. It's got these really cute little vintage, let me pull them out. These sweet vintage gingerbread people. These are the cutest. They come in large and medium and tiny. So sweet. I love the cupcake on her head. And there's also an adorable Christmas puppy with a little peppermint on his collar. Super cute. And then there's this wonderful gingerbread house, which comes in various sizes. I've used the smallest on my album cover. I love the colors in this. They're just sweetly vintage. Look at that. The detail, she draws all of these herself. And then her husband laser cuts them. I mean, they are an amazing team and everything Renee does is just gorgeous. She's even got little frost in the window panes and the little striped uh, peppermint pillows on the window sills. It's just the cutest thing ever. I love, I love Renee's attention to detail. And then there's a sweet candy cane that comes in a whole bunch of different sizes. Again, beautiful detail. And um, then there's a bunch of plain chipboard. I didn't work with any of the plain chipboard, so I'm not showing that today. There's also matching flowers. And there's um, glitter glass, which I put into my shaker. You can kind of see it in there. It's gingerbread spice, so cute. So that is the new thing that I'm working with. And then I pulled out from my stash Echo Park's Gingerbread Christmas. I think this is a 2020 release, but I, I love it, and I'm pretty sure you can still get it. I have the 12 by 12 kit, and as you can see, I've pretty much used it all up. I got a little bag of scraps here, and then some cut pieces, but this is a great um, collection if you want to make a Christmas recipe album, or just, um, you know, like capture your Christmas party pictures with all those goodies. Look at all these it was the gingerbread houses that convinced me to use this with the Renee Bouquet goodies. And then here's the sticker sheet, which I've also used a lot of. So I don't have a lot of it to show you, but you can see on the cover, this might be my favorite design right here. And um, I use that quite a bit in the album. So um, every year I try to do a little Christmas present for you guys because you're so faithful to follow and you leave sweet comments. And I feel like we're friends, even though we've never met. So my little Christmas present for you is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make this five and a half by five and a half folio using 110 pound craft card stock. And then you can use it. I really recommend that you use 110 pound paper, but you can use any color base. You can use, you know, you can make it with any theme. So on the cover, this is one of Renee's snowflake frames. I've backed this with clear acrylic cardstock or acetate, added three layers of foam, and that's my little shaker window. And I've got all kinds of, look at all the goodies. I've got little gingerbread people. I've got peppermint sticks, candy canes, little sparklets. Those are all from Buttons Galore. And then I've got some of um, Renee's itty bitty first snow, snowflakes in there. I treated the frame, I embossed it with shabby white embossing powder, and I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it is truly gorgeous. And then these are her sweet shop flowers that I've arranged around. This is copper and cream, a really reasonable ribbon, and I know you don't expect to see this kind of an autumn color on a Christmas folio, but it's perfect for gingerbread. It's exactly the color of gingerbread. We have a ribbon tie, and this is copper taffeta. Here is the spine. I've got a little gingerbread man charm, some little rusty jingle bells, some little rusty bells, some sweet little enamel charms, a mitten, um, a little house, 
There's a candy cane on here somewhere. Um, um, and then this little vintage poinsettia. The ribbon wraps all the way around the outside of the folio. So let's take a look inside. This is a really fun little interactive folio and it's not hard to make. There's a slash pocket inside the front cover and I've just folded a couple of the four by six to fit in here. This one I trimmed down to just under five and a half by four. And these are great for, um, I mean, this is a recipe, so that's pretty cool. I might even make them, they sound really good. And then on here, you could put a photo on the back. But see, this is that pat, this was my favorite pattern. Um, I love that and the gingerbread houses, they're just beautiful. So dressed it up with some stickers. And then over here on this first page, we've got this fun flip out element. So I'll try not to go too fast. This measures four by, I think five. So room for photos. This is a little tip down. All I did was score, this had a branding strip on the bottom and I just scored along the branding strip and glued it back behind my designer paper. Then here's a fun little flip up element. These are, I forget what they are, but anyway, we're gonna make them so you'll find out. Here's a little pocket with a little tag. I pulled out some old Christmas washi tape and put it to good use here to decorate my pockets and then room for another photo here. Dressed it up with stickers here and stickers here. So that's kind of fun. And this has a magnetic closure. Then this flips open, isn't that fun? And then here's another pocket with a three by four tucked inside. And again, you can put a photo here, you can put photos or recipe cards. Um, you could do three by five recipe cards with this and uh, put them in the pockets. Another little pocket and I just made a little mini folio with some of my scraps. You know, I just glue down the scraps and then score around them. You guys have seen me do that. Here's some gingerbread washi tape. This is actually, I think, from Prima um, Pink pink Autumn or something like that. Anyway, but whatever washi you want. Then this flips open. This is a stacked spine mini album. So you can see the outer spine is the widest and then they progressively get smaller and then the pages also get smaller. So you get this really fun staggered page design when you open it. Here's a little pocket and I just used some of my scraps to make a couple of little tags to put in there. So you could put little photos on there or you could do some journaling and those tuck in there. Then here's a little waterfall feature. Here's my little tiny um, gingerbread. I guess it's not a puppy. I thought it was a puppy. It's a gingerbread boy. Sorry guys, I thought it was a puppy. <laughs> And this just flips up. This is using the four by fours. And these had the branding strip either on the top or on the bottom. And then I dressed up with stickers. Of course, you could leave this blank in here if you wanted to do a photo. Then this page flips and we've got a double pull out hidden pocket page. So these pull out. You've got room in here for hidden journaling and then photos, large photos on the pages. And this is the center of the album. So that's where I put my um, dangle charm through. Flip, and we've got another pocket page. This time, instead of tags, I just took a scrap of my uh, craft paper and lined it for photos. Really cute. That goes in the pocket. And here's um, a little flip page. So sweet. With um, just some journaling space here and room for a photo. I cut this out of one of the three by fours to make a turn tab. And here's one of Renee's candy canes. This is just a simple flip up page. This doesn't pull out or anything. I just um, cut my paper. Well, actually this is the base and this had a branding strip. So I tucked the branding strip behind the base page just to make this. And this is the back cover. Here's our sweet little gingerbread girl. This flips out. Here's another image that I trimmed down, a little sweet pocket. This is one of the border pieces. And I just fussy cut out all these little tags that were in the collection 
to go in the pocket. And of course, you could put photos in there too. And then this is kind of fun. There are a whole bunch of these little two by two squares. So I cut them out as one strip, and scored between them, accordion fold. And then I've got one of these little Tim Holtz tiny clips to hold it together so it doesn't go springing all over the place. And there's the back cover. So that's the album. Let me clear my desk and I'll be right back and we will make the base together. Okay, let's go ahead and get this started. I will tell you I am working with Recollections 110 pound craft card stock. You can get it at Michael's. They've been having it on sale and it, I love it's super sturdy. It's just shy of being chipboard. So it's great for a little album like this. So the first thing you're going to do is take one sheet of your eight and a half by 11 and you're going to trim it so that it's 11 by five and a half. And then you're gonna put quarter inch score tape on the right. And then from the other half of this, you're going to cut two five and a half by five and a half inch squares. And you're just going to, we've done this a million times, you know, this is kind of my thing. We're just gonna line this up I always like to check the back to make sure I'm straight. So we use that score tape as a line to help us keep straight. And then we just join this together. Then bring in your scoring tool. All right, and you're going to score this at five and a half. And we want an inch and a quarter spine, so six and three quarters. Then fold this, score it again at five and a half. And then you've got this flap, okay? And this is your cover. Now, if you end up with a little piece hanging over like this, I just put it in my cutter and laid it flat and trimmed everything nice and neat. So you can do that, all right, if you didn't get quite a perfect union there. So this folds like this. Front cover, spine, back cover, flap page, all right? So you've got another five and a half inch by five and a half inch square. Take another piece of your eight and a half by 11 Trim it to 11 by five and a half, but this time put your score tape on the left. And once again, we're just gonna line this up. Okay, looks good. And with score tape, you always want to burnish down. Burnish means you're just pressing on it to, it just makes that score tape hold. Okay, so for the middle page, you're going to score this at four and a quarter. You're going to score it at nine and a half, and then at 10 and a half. And that's gonna leave you with a piece here. You wanna trim this out so that it is also five and a quarter. So this piece is going to look like this. All right, and you've got a one inch spine. So set that aside, bring in your last piece, and this is going to be a three quarter inch spine. And this we've actually trimmed to 10 and three quarters. So we're going to score this one at five. and five and three quarters and fold. And this is our center panel with a three quarter inch spine. So now we just need to join these three pieces together. Okay, so now we're gonna put this guy together and we're gonna start with our center panel. And I've put half inch and quarter inch score tape on my spine, bring in what we call the middle panel. This has the little flap page that turns back this way. 
and turn this. Oops, take your score tape off first. That's always helpful. And line this up. Check it on both sides to make sure it's straight. And once it's straight, you just burnish this down. All right. And I'll come in. Sometimes you have a little overhang of the score tape. It just, just rubs off like that. So now, see, here's that fun flip page that we had. Here's our center panel. See, so there we go, there's that. Now, bring in your cover. And you can keep making this, like if you wanna start with your outside spine larger, I wouldn't go much larger really than two inches on this, but I mean, you can put as many pages in as you want using the same technique. So I've lined my spine with my score tape. I'm gonna open this one, flattening my pages down. I'm gonna come in on that spine. Whoops, and I'm gonna line this one up. Make sure I'm straight on both sides and that looks good. So now I burnish this down. See how easy that is? So now let's fold this guy all up. See, there's your stacked spines, front cover, inside cover, flap page. This will be a pocket page and it covers up this joint. Here's another page, another, whoops, <laughs> this goes on the back. These two pages are our double pages in the middle. Then we have these two pages. One of these is another pocket page and then our flap page. So the next thing I wanna show you how to do is how to make that fun little flip flap mechanism that's on that front flap page. So you need a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and you're going to score this vertically at four and at eight. Then you're going to turn it and you're going to score it at three and a half and eight and a half. Then take your trimmer or scissors and trim out the four corners. So you end up with this plus sign, all right? Okay, now fold this flap up and make sure it's straight because you know sometimes they go a little wonky. Fold this flap. down, fold this flap in, and this flap over, all right? And then this little bundle will glue onto this flap after you've lined the back with your patterned paper. So I don't wanna glue mine down right now, but you're just gonna put your adhesive on the back. To add the magnet, you want to put a magnet here. I use these basic gray, actually they're 49 in market now, and they have a plus and a minus sign, and they have, um, I think these have adhesive on them, I don't know, maybe they don't. This is the first time I've gotten these. I've bought, I've been buying basic gray adhesive discs from um, Joann's, but they didn't have them last time I looked, so I had to get these. Okay, these don't have any adhesive on them. So what you would do is go ahead and put your, put a little score tape on the back or use a sticky dot or something because you're going to seal over it. If you go to my Adhesives 101, I have a whole tutorial that shows you how to put a magnet into a page. So I'll link to that in the description box so you can find that. But anyway, I put the magnet between these two pages and then that holds it shut. So that's that little element. Then this is a pocket page here. 
And for the pockets, I cut my paper to five inches by six and a half. I scored a half inch on the top, the bottom, and the right hand side. And then this is going to fold in like this. And it's gonna glue down. You'll need to cut a little piece, just a little scrap of your designer paper. This time, I'll show you what I did. And I don't know why I didn't do this the first time, except I think I was tired. But I took this oval die, and any oval die will do. This is a fairly small one. This one is two, just about two and three quarters. And this is an old My Favorite Things die. I don't even think they carry it anymore. They were stitched ovals. Um, so what I did was I just lined it up and then I held it down with a piece of tape. And I like to use this Post-it labeling and cover-up tape. It really holds things in place, but it releases easily. And then once you've die cut it, you've got these cute little tabs that you can maybe use inside your folio, some, your album somewhere. So this glues down here. And then there are two of these. I think the second one goes here, all right? So super simple. And then you just dress these pages up however you like. Um, here's that flap page at the back where you can add some fun features. But this is a great little folio. To do the ribbon closure, um, the neat thing about this is if you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you can cut it to like five and three eighths or five and a quarter if you like wider borders. And you can just wrap it around and it will cover the whole, it will cover the whole cover, which is really cool. Um, or you can do, you know, like five and three eighths here and five and three eighths here and then do a contrasting spine. But I just did mine one whole piece. And then this center panel is where you're gonna punch your hole for your dangle charm. But great versatile little uh, mini album base, super sturdy because of the 110 pound card stock. It just feels good in your hands. This is a fun size. You can use six by six pads with this, which is really awesome. So um, there you go, guys. Merry Christmas. This is probably my last Make and Take Tuesday for 2022. I have a lot on my to-do list before Christmas and after Christmas. So I'm taking a week off to spend with my grandbabies and my family and my sweet husband and maybe take a nap or two, who knows? <laughs> but I will be back uh, with Make and Take Tuesday in January of 2023. And at that time, uh, I've got some really neat surprises because it's my 10 year blog anniversary in January, 2023. So I've got some fun stuff planned. We're gonna have a good time. This will hold you. You can make a whole bunch of these while I'm away. You can make just tons and tons. Don't forget, I have over 300 videos in my playlist. If you're bored and you need something to do, get in there and look around. There's a bunch of good stuff in there already uh, for tutorials. Authent my authentic playlist, my um, uh, tutorial playlist, my Throwback Thursday, and my Make and Take Tuesday are loaded with tutorials. So really, you should keep good and busy with that. Now, my husband made a suggestion when he saw the little album that I made. He said, this would be really fun if you just built the inside like a box and filled it with chocolates or something. So you could do just this cover the way I showed you. You could have your flap and all of that, but then this center part would be a box filled with goodies. That would be fun too. Anyway, there's some ideas for you. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. I'll be back with one more Throwback Thursday before I... I'm not really going on vacation. I'm going to be working really hard. I have a Button Farm Club card kit and then a Button Farm Club mini album uh, for their album club. And I haven't put my tree up. I haven't... I've done my Christmas shopping, but nothing is wrapped. I have cookies to bake, so I won't really be on vacation. I just won't be 
making videos. I hope you understand. I thank you for joining me here today. And now I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.